Hi, this is Ananya Tahir with Muhammad Sufyan Khan and Ishan. Today for the media cell with a very special interview with two Rhodes scholars for the badge of 2023. We have Khalid and Vedant with us today. And they both are from the Stephen's badge of 2023. And in India, there are only five Rhodes scholars every year and two of them are sitting with us right now. <laughs> so um, beginning with something we all want to know, what was the initial reaction, like the most raw, honest reaction when the information was broken to you that you have gotten the scholarship? Khalid. Okay. So the thing is, uh, after I'd given my interview, surprisingly, I got very relaxed for some reason and then I went to Kareem's and had some lunch. <laughs> and then <laughs> once we came back and we were all asked to stand and then the person, the National Secretary for Roads, uh, Trust in Roads Committee in India, he announced the names first read out Vedant's name so I was like okay we got one from Stephens but then he said my name also and I was like okay <laughs> that's crazy we got two from our college so I was I don't know it just felt very I guess I did not expect that but I was not elated or jubilant mm -hmm. per se it was just a, it is finally done yeah. that, that kind of feeling what about you Vedant? Um, for me, so it's similar to him, after the interview, it was all quite nice. We went to, all of us went to Kareem's, all the finalists at that time. And then when we came back, we were sort of, I think, waiting there for an hour um, while they were all deliberating inside that room. And for me, it was shock. It was, it was not, it was shock. I, I could not process it for a while. I think I've, so after the interview, they called the five scholars, after they announced, they called the five scholars in to talk to us. And even during that, I was in shock. I think it was after I came out from all of it and left the venue that I finally sort of processed it. All right. Um, so what compelled you guys like knowing that it's a very cutthroat competition and what was the mo inner motiva motivation behind it? I think the biggest motivation was that we have already had so many old scholars from our college. So I thought maybe, I mean, it's a fair chance everybody stands <clears throat> in the college. A lot of my peers applied to so along with them, I, I just thought maybe I... In fact, as late as June, I thought I wouldn't apply, but then I thought, why not give it a shot? Um, for me, it was different because in the <clears throat> sciences, Rhodes is often not talked about. I wanted the Rhodes because I wanted to go to Oxford or Cambridge and sort of study what I wanted to, and I wanted that platform that Rhodes provides us because I was interested in society issues, etc. So, um, but I did not think I was capable of getting Rhodes. <clears throat> so I did not apply until the last day. I started my application because I thought, hey, why not? But then I left it because I didn't think I could get there. Then it was out of pressure from my friends and from my parents that I actually did end up applying. Okay, so Khaled, I came to know that you are a football fan. Like basically you gave an interview for Times and you mentioned that you are a football fan. So basically I also saw in residence also you watch the football match with full dedication and all. <laughs> so which team are you supporting for this World Cup? So in this World Cup, I mean, it's kind of blasphemous, but I am supporting Argentina for Messi purely. Although I am a Madrid fan, so people would think I should support Portugal. But I guess if Messi wins, football wins this time. Nice. That is great. All right. So um, I met a lot of people before interviewing you both and I asked them if they wanted to ask you something. And everyone said that they're very confused about how to begin the research on scholarships and financial aids. So how did you guys start? Like, what would you suggest a good course of plan for everyone else in college and otherwise? Well, I guess the thing with Rhodes is that it's one of the earliest the application for yeah, Rhodes very... start it, it starts very early mm -hmm. so you have a head start there and they give you a fair amount of time to consider your applications okay. to get your LORs and you know prepare your statement of purpose and whatnot. so if you're looking for scholarships I guess uh, concomitant with that question is also what you want to do the mm -hmm. kind of work that you want to do and the place you want to go to so mm -hmm. it's not just like you just need a scholarship just to study abroad. So you just consider your options, what you want to do. Because even in India, there are a lot of scholarships and there are a lot of good universities where you can study. And of course, Rhodes is a premier kind of uh, scholarship that's awarded. So the application process starts in June and it lasts for two months. Then you get your entire written statement and all sorted. And after that, of course, the interview process. So you have quite a bit of time into your, in your hand. So if you are considering to apply to Rhodes, uh, you can start searching for LORs and start considering what you want to do at Oxford. That would be a good start. Right. Um, actually, for me, a lot of my guidance and scholarships came from faculty and seniors. Okay. 
I think it's very worth just going up to the faculty in college and asking them because they have seen students come out for the last 20 years, like especially the senior faculty, and they've all a lot of them have gone on scholarships. So I think it's worth going to the faculty because they write recommendations also for them, so they know a lot about these scholarships. All right. Um, so uh, with Vedant, when I was reading your interview for the Times of India, I was very interested to know that you want to study societal issues associated with scientific research, something we usually do not see these two things together. So I had to reread it. So how did this happen and what do you mean by this? What does it imply? Okay, so the main thing I meant by this is sort of when I was looking at the lack of diversity in the scientific community. And this was reflected in, you know, in the society positions also in, in, in the department. And even within, I mean, one of the biggest problems in the engineering institutes today is the gender ratio. Yeah. So, and I think this year in the first year batch of physics, that problem is exemplified. There's a four is to one ratio or something like that. So it's, it's, it's quite sad. So I think that was sort of the motivation for me. It was seeing that this is a big problem. There's huge citation gaps between male and female that. Um, so th this was mainly the motivation for me to explore it because it's not done before. Yeah. So it's something that people don't talk about enough. All right. And <clears throat> so coming to you, Khalid, like I and about, read about you that you are, you'll be working on the Muslim identity, Muslim rep representation in South Asia region. So what was your uh, aim like what do you want to do in like as a literature student uh, so, so researching about muslim identity in, in south asia so what do you think about it i think uh, as far as identities are concerned we people usually see it as a sort of monolithic uh, sort of narrative that is thrust upon you and you are defined by what the world wants you to be but through the study of Indian Muslims in South Asia, especially through the perspective of oral history or the methodology of oral history, kind of discover that there are many ways in which Muslims identify as Muslims and try to uh, try to set the boundaries of what they think they are within mm -hmm. the you know the conceptual idea of being a Muslim in South Asia. So that's one thing that I wanted to kind of engage with that question. Also, because I studied in Jamia for my plus two, and I was like at the hotbed of the protest that happened in 2019 against NNRC. Uh, so I kind of thought that that event threw up a lot of questions about the representation of Muslim, not only in the Indian democracy, but also in the media. So I, I want to kind of study the saturation of the images of Muslims, both in terms of, uh, you know, written text and media, uh, multimedia that uh, kind of circulates around. So how do Muslims define themselves and how are they in turn defined by the society that they live? So that's one question. So do you think being a literature student has helped you here? Actually, yeah, actually. Because, uh, I mean, that's true for any, I guess, any discipline. Uh, but literature in particular kind of asks you to focus on uh, the individual experience of being a human. Yeah. So, for instance... Um, I mean, uh, an academic study of an event like Scheinbach can perhaps point out at the point out the commonalities between many associated protest movements led by women and whatnot. But only by studying oral histories can you understand the diversity of the opinions and the ideas and the objectives that the protesters themselves had. So let's say. Uh, what an Indian Muslim woman was protesting for might have been very different from what a male uh, Muslim leader might have had his view of the protest. So studying literature, I think, gives you that kind of um, uh, that kind of vision about uh, the minuteness of what human life is. <clears throat> so as far as I've understood, there is a series of interviews that happen for this uh, scholarship. So can you walk? us through the experience and how it all unfolded in this like when you got the Rhodes Scholarship and all. So so actually the process starts with you registering on the Rhodes portal and then you need to get four LOAs, maximum five. So at least three of them have to be an, uh, have to be academic and one, at least one has to be a character LOA. So academic LOAs can only be given by people who have taught you, preferably in the university. I think only in the university or college, wherever you are at. And then you need a statement of purpose, which is 750 words, and academic statement, which is 350 words. So you can go to the website and check out what the details of these statements. Mm -hmm. But uh, after you've submitted them, usually after, I think, one or one and a half month, uh, you get the mail as to whether you have qualified for the preliminary interview or not. So the preliminary interview is mainly academic in nature. It 
this time it happened online i think previously it used to happen in the physical mode but this time it happened online for us over zoom and they usually ask you about they usually ask you questions related from your um, academic transcript uh, academic statement as to what do you want to do do you have that th- do you have a thorough knowledge of the course that you want to do at oxford and related questions uh, but the second interview which is a more general interview it happens like i guess after the <coughs> after uh, the selection process uh, so usually 15 or 20 students are shortlisted for the final interview which happens uh, in person so it happened for us at the india international center uh, i think vedant can talk more about that the final interview is uh, one second <coughs> i have a little bit of a cold um the final interview was a more grueling interview and the preliminary interview was shorter it's around 15 to 20 minutes it was you know people from your discipline the final interview was divided into two parts there's a social event on the first day which is with the panel you get to meet them etc so in our case we had a tea party yeah. okay. uh, so it was quite fun we get to you know we sit down with the panel we talk to them and then um the, after that it is the final interviews which are so i think the last 15 students or so yeah. who have interviewed the final interview and there you have a panel of around 9 8 people eight, eight people and they are all from different disciplines and they all done different things most of them are ex road scholars and that's a grueling interview i think mine lasted around an hour that one yeah. so i think the main objective of the final interview is to know you as a person the motivations that drive you and uh, you know even your academic interest how would you put it best to a person who is not from your field something like and one question what are you both expecting from oxford now like there must be something some dream you must have seen the pictures of the campus on and before off record you said oxford is so much more prettier so <laughs> what are you expecting let's hope we will get into oxford yeah, we don't even get no yeah. we got into oxford yeah because can you explain this paradox that road yeah. scholarship does not guarantee an oxford admission so, so road scholarship so we are technically not road scholars but we are road scholar yes. elect okay. so our road scholarships will only get ratified once we get into an oxford uh, oxford college mm-hmm. uh, so you have to apply separately to oxford university of course the road trust will help you with the process mm-hmm. but uh, it's uh, i mean it's not that being a road scholar gives, gives you any leverage or whatever I mean, you having through the whole process yeah. again, you have to write down your statement of purpose, your recommendations. And I think you can reuse the roads recommendations, but otherwise, it's a whole new process. Yeah. So, roads is, if I'm correct, it's just for Oxford or it some. Just, yes. It's just for Oxford. It's just for Oxford. <clears throat> All right. I hope you both get in. That will be amazing. <laughs> And thinking about future university life, what are you going to miss from here? Especially because I know yours was two years online. So, anything which. specific period of time you had with yourself something you picked up from here or something you generally going to miss a lot uh, i think with me i have been here since last year because i've been in a, in the residence okay. even when classes were offline so i have been living here for like nearly 2 years now so i'm definitely going to miss the residence i'm definitely going to miss walking at night uh, <laughs> around the campus but yeah i mean i will miss my friends a lot because I mean in, when you are an undergraduate student you have more time in your hands mm. and you can you know kind of do more stuff but once yeah. you go to oxford which has a very rigorous environment you have to plunge yourself into your studies so that kind of personal interaction which you had with a lot of friends you want to miss and i think that's true for me also i won't miss the place as much as i miss the people yeah so yeah i met some very good people here and uh, I think the discussions that we all had, the fact that you know physics is a very niche subject. It's not something a lot. So the fact that you found this like-minded group of people, I think that's very that's a very nice thing to have. I think Stephen does that to all of us. So at last, like you are leaving for, say, hopefully for Oxford. So what's your <laughs> advice advice for the juniors? Yeah, I mean college. We all like for roads or something in general, like for academic and all. So what's your advice as a senior for you? Yeah. I guess the first advice would be to if you are in your first year, don't worry about roads or anything. <laughs> Just you are in college. The best thing about Stevens is that the society, um, I don't know, culture here is very active, and so there are a lot of societies you can be a part of. Uh, you can do a lot of activities. Some people do it mainly because they want to put it on their CV. That's that's not going to help. Please do it. 
because you want to do it there's a lot of fun to be had irrespective of whether you get a scholarship or not but if you are looking to go into that direction uh, i mean make sure you have some sort of committed vision in your mind towards which you are working which does not mean that you devote all your time to that but just keep it in the back of your mind and do your own reading do your own work apart from your academic studies and i mean participate in class discussions talk to your teachers uh, make sure that uh, you know whatever is taught in class you kind of give your own opinion have your own yeah. opinions and what not so i mean just stay there and enjoy it. as long as that happens i guess you it's it's all fair game <laughs> i think that's that, that's true so for me it would be that you know explore don't be stuck in one thing mm-hmm. do a lot of things in fact you know for scholarships i wrote that is what they that's what they appreciate they appreciate mm-hmm. you doing a lot of things and also being very good at certain things mm-hmm. right so that's one and two specifically for science students i would say because they tend to cocoon themselves way more than the humanities students explore a lot and force yourself to explore and not just that explore academically also explore way beyond the syllabus do a lot of projects science is about research so do research mm-hmm. projects you don't need to do an internship to do them do them on your own yeah. just have some fun yeah, yeah. thank you so much that was it from our side thank you so much for sitting down with us today thank yeah you. and thank you so much.